Welcome to our SmartRay ECHO 95 Dual Head Video Tutorial. In this video tutorial, we would like to briefly outline the idea behind the dual head technology and show you how two heads can be registered to each other and how the registration can be applied. The basic idea behind the dual head is to view the scene from two different perspectives in order to always get a perspective without occlusion. Via a registration process, the point clouds on both sides are transferred into a common coordinate system. The point density increases by a factor of 2 in regions free of shadowing. You will soon be able to find the available model variants and their characteristics on our website www.smartrate.com. A registration artifact is required for the most possible accurate registration. Here you see a combination of such possible artifacts for the model variants 9540+, 9520+, and 9510+. In this video we are using a 9510 plus dual head. To do this the artifact must be positioned in the field of view under the scanner. With the SmartRay Studio 4 we connect to one side of the dual head and check the positioning of the artifact and the settings for region of interest and select the calibrated area in the imager. This is shown by dashes line if the measurement range indicator has been activated. We continue with setting the exposure time with gain and optimizing the values until we are satisfied with the lighting of the scenery. For data triggering, we choose the recording in free running. To create the registration, we activate the Smart Exact metrology mode in order to obtain the highest possible accuracy. Then we activate the archiving of the MSR dual head point cloud and define the path on which the point cloud files are created. Here I would recommend to choose a clear directory structure in order not to get confused with the files of the two heads later. The next step is to define the transport resolution required in the application, as this cannot be adjusted at a later point in time. Finally, we define the number of profile lines to be captured by this static scene. A value of 500 profile lines is completely sufficient here. The same steps have to be done with the other side of the dual head. To do this, we set up a connection to the second head with another SmartRay Studio instance. Also, set the number of profiles to be captured to 500. Check the region of interest, exposure time, data trigger, and Smart Exact Metrology mode. And here again, define a clear path for you to archive the MSR dual head point cloud. And here again, it's important to define the transport resolution, which will be used later in the application. In the next step, let's start the image recording and the archiving of the two heads in the respective studio instances. In order to finally generate a registration file, we start the dual head registration wizard in our first studio instance and refer to the previously recorded point clouds. The respective side of the dual head show with a label 1 and 2 on the housing which side is to be considered as master and which as slave. Here it's important to correctly assign the point clouds in the wizard. Finally, we define the path in which the registration file should be created and start the calculation. This takes a moment and then you can check in the explorer whether the registration file was created successful. In the second part of the webinar, we will now show the practical application of the registration file that has been created. 
For this, we have chosen a BGA with the dimensions of 12 by 9 mm. If we take a closer look to the geometry of the balls, we find with a high resolution 3D laser triangulation sensor, such as a SmartRay Echo 9510, at least one third of the balls cannot be displayed due to occlusions. First, we position the BGA under the scanner and take care of the appropriate settings. To do this, we set the region of interest so that we completely encompass the entire scene. Then, by moving the axis, we check whether the component does not leave the sensor's field of view in its complete transport movement. We continue with the adjustment of the exposure time. It turns out that due to the material mix of metal as the surface of the balls and plastic as the housing, we need a high dynamic. The multiple exposure approach is recommended here. In our case, a use of two different exposure times is sufficient. We see that the already set 200 microseconds exposure time is quite suitable for the plastic part. The area of the metal surface, on the other hand, is overexposed and for this we need to shorten the exposure. Now we activate the multiple exposure and adopt the setting of the two exposure times we had found. Then we activate the data trigger of our axis to provide a trigger signal every 6.3 micrometers. In addition, we define the number of profile lines to be recorded in order to be able to completely capture the entire component and check our settings by starting a 3D recording. Finally, we export the settings in a parameter file. Let's first take a look to the C++ sample, which is installed together with the SmartRay SDK. For this, I have already generated a Visual Studio solution file with the help of our CMake build script and loaded the C++ sample into the Visual Studio. Now, let's take a closer look at the source code of the dual head sample section. At the beginning, a connection to your individual heads is established. The calibration file is loaded from the sensors and the parameter sets which we had exported previously in the studio is loaded to both heads. At this point, we set the number of profiles to be captured again. The crucial part in this sample is the part of loading the registration file. A look at the method shows that the function assumes a standard path and file name for these registration files. For the sake of simplicity, I copy our previously created registration file to this position and rename the file accordingly. Furthermore, the source code of the sample shows the important functions to get a merged point cloud of both heads. In a sense, these are the following three as our API function calls. As our API MSR enable registration to activate the merge. As our API MSR load registration file to load the registration file. And to check the configuration, there is the as our API MSR check setting function. Finally, we start the program and select a dual head sample. As the desired target format, I choose the CMAP image format and start to move the axis. The result of the scan is archived in the Visual Studio project directory and can be loaded offline into Studio 4. Unfortunately, the loaded CMAP picture shows quite a lot of reflections at the beginning and end of each ball. However, these reflections seem to appear all the time above the correct signal. For this reason, we tried the simplest solution and reduced the region of interest to get rid of the areas in which the reflections occur. Since we have now limited the region of interest to such a small area that we hardly have any tolerances available, we need a separate parameter file for each side. This means that we first export the settings from head 1 
into a unique parameter file. Then we also have to adjust the region of interest of head 2 accordingly and then export the setting to a different parameter file. At this point we can also check at which scan rate, which means all the maximum achievable transport speed, we would end up with these settings. Assuming we choose a transport resolution equal to the lateral resolution for our application. To do this, we switch to internal data triggering, select a very high internal frequency to be sure to run into a trigger overflow. Now start a recording and the maximum frequency is displayed in the status bar. If we multiply this scan rate by the transport resolution, in our case 6.3 micrometers, we end up with a maximum transport speed of 22 millimeters per second. But back to our C++ sample. Here we now have to add a new argument to the method for loading parameter files, which allows us to differentiate which file should be loaded for which head. Then we start the program again, select the dual head example, the CMAP image format and start the access to move. The results can be loaded again in the Smarter Studio and visualized. We see that the reflections have almost disappeared completely and we have clearly captured both sides of the BGA points. The Smart Ray team is your partner in realizing shadow-free 3D image recording in your project. We are now at the end of this video tutorial and I am pleased that you stayed on until the end.